Say, what is this? A gag? No, it's no gag. It's as serious as death. It doesn't matter what this civilian does with his time. If he wants to toss a ping pong ball down a bowling alley, it's his business. But in your business, brother, it matters. You just don't use a 45 caliber pistol cartridge like this if you've got a tough job for a walloper like the 105 millimeter howitzer shell. Don't get the wrong idea. They're both good. But they have different jobs to do. Between them lies the whole range of infantry ammunition and all the destruction and death it can produce. These are your tools from now on, soldier. Take a good look at them. 30 caliber carbine. 30 caliber rifle and machine gun. 50 caliber machine gun. Hand grenade. Rifle grenade. Fragmentation. Anti-tank rifle grenade. Anti-tank rocket. 60 millimeter mortar. Fragmentation. 81 millimeter mortar. Fragmentation. 81 millimeter mortar. Demolition. 37 millimeter armor piercing. 57 millimeter armor piercing. Let's look at them one by one and see what you've got on your side. The smallest weapon in the infantry regiment. A 45 caliber automatic pistol. It's a quick handling rapid fire weapon with a real wallop. Beyond 50 yards, it won't penetrate armor, even light armor like this steel helmet. But the heavy slug has terrific shock power. It'll knock a man down almost any time it hits him. You can use it in a tough spot at close range. But the real bite of the infantry is 30 caliber ammunition. This is the stuff you're going to have to live with. You use both types. 30 caliber rifle and 30 caliber carbine. Take a look at the carbine first. It has replaced many pistols in the infantry regiment. It's most effective at short ranges where you can fire 40 aimed shots a minute. At a range of 100 yards, this is what the carbine can do to a Nazi. You'd need more than aspirin for that head. Those monkeys aren't all behind trees. Take your time. A lot of these guys are going to be dead if you take your time. Squeeze them off, make it good. Pretty handy, that carbine. Even though it weighs only five pounds, it's a killer if you know just when to use it. Don't try to knock out a tank with it. But if a truck like this comes along, five pounds of carbine can be more effective than a five-ton roadblock. That's what a carbine with light 30 caliber ammunition can do up to 300 yards. But now take a gander at your heavier 30 caliber stuff. The stuff you riflemen have stashed away in your belts. That's really something. It comes in three kinds. Armor piercing, tracer, and ball. And soldier, it's going to be your best friend day in and day out. Whether you fire it with the M1, the O3, the M1917, the BAR, or a machine gun, the penetrating force is the same. Murderous. Remember what the carbine did to this German helmet? It went through easy enough, but the rifle slug just blasts through steel as if it were brown paper. Yeah, and it can do a lot more than plow through a helmet. For instance, that looks like pretty solid cover, doesn't it? An oak tree 12 inches thick. Now watch that bucket. Through the tree, through the bucket. That would make a pretty dead Nazi. Maybe you never realized what that 30 caliber of yours can do. Maybe you forgot. 
Well, take a look at this concrete wall. It's four inches thick. On the range, you find out that your rifle is the most accurate in the world. Now you'll see that it's got a punch to match. Anyone using that wall for cover would do it just once. At ranges up to 200 yards, armor-piercing ammunition can smash through this kind of wall any time, any day. Brother, that 30 caliber stuff is your right arm. 30 caliber ammunition doesn't look like much of a match for this group, does it? Well, it isn't. But you can always use your head, too. That German 75 isn't worth a damn without a crew. Sure, the gun's still there, but so is your rifle. Plug the recoil mechanism. Or smack him in the eye, knock his sights out. That's a pretty sight, a blind German gun. You can put the clincher on it, knock it out for keeps with an incendiary grenade. Jam one of those incendiary grenades down the bore of the gun, and the metal from the grenade will fuse with the tube. That chokes it up fine, for good. Plenty or nothing. The incendiary grenade was just what the doctor recommended for the German 75. But you've got another prescription for the boys themselves. The fragmentation grenade. It's very useful for treating them when they're bunched, like these guys. Flying fragments will give them a long rest cure. You've got different grenades for almost any situation. Suppose you're in a spot and want to advance behind a smoke screen. Well, reach into your bag for a white phosphorus hand grenade. It throws burning particles as far as 20 feet. It's not meant to be an offensive weapon, but a hot shower like this is nothing to get caught in. A few drops on his skin will make him wish he were dead. If enough fall on him, he will be. What if you find a Nazi pillbox staring you in the face and you want to take care of it without being seen? There's one more GI grenade. The Army calls it the frangible grenade with the FS filler. But if that sounds like double talk to you, just remember this. It produces a heavier smoke screen than the white phosphorus hand grenade. It hangs around a lot longer. It'll cover the movement of more men and help them get up there to smash that pillbox. Now for your automatic weapons. Lesson number one. These five men with M1s are getting off a total of 80 aimed shots a minute. This man coming up with the automatic rifle, the BAR to you, can also fire 80 shots a minute himself. That'll give you some idea of the destructive power of your automatic weapons. It means, of course, that one man with the BAR has a firepower equal to five men with the M1 and can pin the enemy down just as effectively. The five riflemen are now free to maneuver. They can come around and try to hit him on the flank. A powerful weapon in the hands of a well-trained man. The PAR. 80 shots a minute. But a machine gun is more powerful than a BAR. Nothing but the best for the master race. And this is a machine gunner's dream.
He can mow them down like wheat at 250 rounds a minute. That's still the same 30 caliber you've got socked away in your cartridge belt. Coming out of your M1, it's deadly, sure. But when it's pouring out of a machine gun, light or heavy, it can make a man look like a sieve in a matter of seconds. Machine guns can tackle all kinds of targets. For example, it's got plenty of pepper for a dish like this. That doesn't have to be a treat. Your machine gun can do a lot more to something that's breathing. And this won't be a wall much longer. The main job of a heavy machine gun is to cover an area with bullets. Two or more guns can make a peaceful pond look like this. Principally because of vibrations, the bullets of a single gun make this long pattern. This is the beaten zone made at a thousand yards. The enemy, one thousand yards away. Long range for some weapons, but not for the stuff these boys are packing. It's just what this machine gun's looking for. Ever hear a battle between two machine guns? They talk back and forth for a while. Then, all of a sudden, one of them runs out of dialogue. Our machine gun has a good position. It's protected from flat trajectory fire. But the enemy has mortars. And mortar fire is high angle fire which can slam down from the sky. There's only one thing to do in a case like this. Get ready to move to another position. Meanwhile, we have mortars too. Two kinds. This 81 millimeter whose shell has an effective radius of 25 yards and the 60 millimeter, whose shell has an effective radius of 17 yards. Our mortars can take care of the enemy's machine guns, and with the high angle of fire, their mortars as well. Of course, an exploding mortar shell can kill, but let's see just how convincing it can be. The overhead cover for this command post is two feet thick, made of dirt and logs, and a swell target for the 81 millimeter heavy high explosive shell. The shell weighs 10 and 3 quarter pounds, and it's equipped with a delay action fuse, which explodes after penetration. Mortar also fires smoke shell. The white phosphorus may set fire to very dry materials, and it will produce casualties. But its main job is to blind the enemy with a heavy white smoke. Come the big boys, the sluggers. Tough? Sure. Powerful armor, heavy firepower, very tough. But they can be taken. You've got the weapons to blind him. Burn his pants off, blow him to hell. Watch. An ordinary bottle. Fill it with fire and you've got a Molotov cocktail. These cocktails can be homemade from gasoline, crankcase drainage, and saturated rags. Wipe the stuff with a match. Three alarms for any tank in the business. If you have one of these M1 frangible grenades equipped with an igniter, 
You can forget the homemade cocktail. But whichever you use, the Molotov cocktail's no party for guys in a tank. You may not always have a cocktail, but you will have a rifle. It won't rip the tracks off a tank or puncture the armor, but a rifle can make it button up. You can jab his eyes out. Blind a tank and it's practically out of business. But you don't have to gamble on hitting a target as small as a slit if you've got an anti-tank grenade. This is the most powerful weapon you carry. It makes you a walking arsenal. It weighs one and a quarter pounds, and it'll do a go-to-hell job on any light or medium tank. Doesn't look like much, does it? But don't kid yourself. The steel that came from that hole was shattered into fragments that whizzed inside the tank like a gang of hornets. You can put that kind of a hole in a tank from 75 yards. But remember, whenever you can, hold your fire. Wait till the tank is smack up on you. Now, give it to him. Hit him square where the armor is thinnest, on the rear or side. Don't let the words anti-tank throw you. Watch what it can do to an enemy machine gun packed with plenty of sandbagging. See? It doesn't have to be a tank for the anti-tank grenade to go to work. But the anti-tank grenade is not the only one you can fire off the end of your rifle. For example, you can't lob a grenade by hand at these Nazis. They're too far away. But you've got fragmentation grenades. And if you launch them with either your rifle or carbine, it's like sending your Sunday punch air mail. There are two kinds of fragmentation grenades. This one is time-fused. You fire it when you want an air burst above the ground. The other one has an impact fuse, like the anti-tank grenade. It explodes as soon as it hits hard enough ground. Both fragmentation grenades carry about 200 yards and have about the same effect. If any of those supermen are within five yards of either burst, finished. There's another weapon in the infantry regiment. When it first came out, soldiers thought it must have been found in a pile of junk. This is far from the truth. The first time the Nazis got a peek at it, they turned it a secret weapon because they didn't know what hit them. It's called a bazooka. It has knockout written all over it. Like everything else in the army, it's got an official name, the anti-tank rocket launcher, and it'll tackle almost any kind of target. It can stop a tank all by itself. Stop it cold. A few on a railroad. And the enemy goes back to mules. A sandbag emplacement is no place for the enemy to hide. Not when he's hiding from the bazooka. This pillbox is heaven. The bazooka makes it hell. But the bazooka has one special dish a light or medium tank. It'll knock a hole through the sides of a tank all day, from any range up to 200 yards. Okay, you've seen a rifle smash a vision slit. You know how the anti-tank grenade and the bazooka can plow through armor. Now let's see how the 37 millimeter anti-tank gun earns its keep. Against troop carriers and crew served weapons, it's effective to about a thousand yards with high explosive shell. The armor piercing shell will do the job against tanks to about 400 yards and against half tracks and armored cars at ranges up to 1,000 yards. Unreal. It has a high rate of fire. 30 shots a minute. 
That means a steady stream of hot steel. And because of its flat trajectory, it's a real sharpshooter. It can hit a tank square on the button. It won't penetrate a medium tank's front armor. Only dented. But just let the tank turn its side. The 37 doesn't kid against the side. That front, hellbar! A tank isn't the only target the 37 can smash. At 800 yards, it can pierce nearly two feet of concrete. 800! Come in! Five! The 37 cuts them down to size. In this case, the projectile penetrated 21 inches. But the 57 millimeter is an even tougher anti-tank gun. It takes over where the 37 leaves off. And at 800 yards or less, it's deadly. Like the 37, the flat trajectory gives it bullseye accuracy. It can smash a hole like this through any part of a tank, front, sides, or rear. It goes for concrete emplacements, too. salvage company. Some people say this is an air war. Maybe so. But don't sell short on the infantry. Even if you feel like burying your head, don't. That won't bring him down. When you're ordered to, your job is to try to get him. A plane flying low over troops has often been knocked down by small arms fire. Of course, the infantry doesn't have to rely entirely on its rifles against planes. It has four other highly effective anti-aircraft weapons. The BAR. The light machine gun. The heavy machine gun. And most vicious of all, the 50 caliber machine gun. This is the baby flying fortresses protect themselves with. The Nazis hate it, and the 50 has been known to make Jap scrapers pretty shy. Don't forget, a plane's got a lot of vulnerable spots, like the engines or the pilot. So keep that lead hot. Keep it ripping into the sky. Even though you don't knock them clear out and down, you can still wound them, chase them off, make them go flapping and limping home to lay up for repairs. That's your job. Hit them with everything you've got. Here's the infantry regiment's largest and most powerful weapon, the 105 millimeter howitzer. It's the infantry's bulldog. It goes for targets too tough for any of its other weapons. 
enemy cannon, anti-tank guns, concrete emplacements, roadblocks. Its effective range is nearly three miles, and it's light and easy to handle. Watch it against this stubborn baby. A roadblock, four feet thick. What? the result of only five shots. To blow it off the face of the earth would probably take 15. It's a real slugger in street fighting, too, when you have to run the enemy out of a building constructed of solid stuff like this. Here are the two whoppers the howitzer pounds out. Assassins, both of them. The high explosive shell for jobs like the roadblock, and the high explosive anti tank shell for jobs like this. He won't get very far. Not with that kind of ventilation. Soldier, maybe you're from Minnesota, maybe you're from Mississippi, New York, or New Mexico. It doesn't matter from where, you all want peace again. And here are the peacemakers. They're tops. Everything you've seen in this picture and more. But a weapon is only as good as the man behind it. So give them hell, and someday you'll be marching in the streets, bringing the peace all Americans want.